Today we want to provide another update on COVID-19 and as it relates to those with arthritis, particularly any form of inflammatory arthritis such as rheumatoid or psoriatic arthritis, but really any autoimmune inflammatory condition, lupus, myositis, so forth. And of course, as we always say, this information is as up to date for the time that we post the video, which is January 2023. We will continue to provide updates as we can. Our website remains up to date as well. So where are we at with the COVID-19 vaccine? So as most know, we have two main options that most uh, folks would have received or thought about, which is the Pfizer product and the Moderna product. Uh, which is essentially available for most ages at this point. There are other COVID-19 vaccines available. The one that perhaps has the most data in terms of how it works is the Novavax product, which is uh, available, although not in huge quantities. The Novavax product is uh, similar to a traditional vaccine that you would have received for flu or uh, many years ago sort of thing in terms of how it's formulated compared to the Pfizer Moderna, which is a newer mRNA technology. In terms of its effect, they seem about the same though. There is also now our bivalent vaccines for Moderna and Pfizer, which are available. Um, these are uh, vaccines that are effective against not only the original strain of COVID, but more recent strains. So the Moderna product is against COVID, uh, the original COVID strain and the original Omicron strain, whereas the Pfizer is against the original COVID strain and a more recent Omicron strain. Although certainly in both cases are not against the, the most active growing strain of COVID that is currently around. Now, one might say, does this matter? Um, certainly data suggests the bivalent uh, vaccines are more effective than the original ones at this stage. However, even if they're not precise against what's currently available, the suggestion is these vaccines remain very effective as long as we have in mind what our goal is. The goal of the vaccines originally and remain uh, around the idea of preventing bad disease severity, so bad COVID, and in doing so to reduce the risk of individuals needing hospitalization, having significant complications, and hopefully death as well. When COVID vaccines first came out, it seemed more hopeful that it might do even more than this in terms of preventing uh, COVID infections, uh, potentially preventing spread as well. Uh, that was not the initial intention. That was a significant benefit, but disease severity, hospitalization, complications, and death are still very important benefits of getting a COVID-19 vaccine, particularly for those with autoimmune disease. In fact, a reminder that the recommendation for how many doses of COVID-19 vaccine is different for those with rheumatic disease compared to the general population. Whereas in the general population, the initial uh, series for the COVID-19 vaccine is considered two shots. For those with rheumatic disease, a minimum of three shots is considered part of that initial primary series. So if you have three shots and you have a rheumatic disease, in particular if you're on medications for that, having three shots does not mean that you've had two and a booster. It means you've had your three initial doses. Getting a booster remains a good idea. That would be four doses. And in fact, five doses are currently available in Alberta, um, minimum of five months apart to uh, as, as a maxim right now. A few things to consider if you are planning to get a COVID vaccine still. Uh, if you're on certain medications, which are commonly used in rheumatology, you may want to review the best timing to get your vaccine with your rheumatologist. So for instance, if you are receiving rituximab and if you're, or if you're on higher doses of prednisone, typically more than 20 milligrams, your body will likely not have a good response to the vaccine, meaning uh, it will not provide you the amount of protection that would otherwise be anticipated. And therefore, it may be worthwhile to coordinate the exact timing with your rheumatologist to get the most benefit. It would not be considered unsafe to get it then. So there's no safety concerns. It just wouldn't work very well. 
Similarly, with the list of medications here, so things like abatacept, Arencia, hydroxychloroquine, or Plaquenil, Jack uh, kinase inhibitors, so things like Rinvoke, Illumiant, Zelgens, Mycophenolate, Celsept, Leflunamide, known as Areva, Azathioprine, Imuran, and Methotrexate. All these may have an impact on how well the COVID vaccine works, but you, not as significantly. And it may be worthwhile discussing optimal timing with your rheumatologist uh, to balance your disease control, your rheumatic disease control, and not to uh, induce any flares, and the best benefit from the COVID vaccine. Other medications, so TNF blockers, which are kind of our original biologics, as well as some others, there's very small concern, uh, but certainly many folks are on combination medications where that question may arise again. In addition to vaccine, we do have antiviral treatment available now, meaning a medication you take should you have an active COVID-19 infection. It's called Paxlovid, and it's a pill, and it is available for those with rheumatic diseases and on treatment. And it can now be prescribed by most physicians. So it's not restricted, whereas before you had to phone a specific phone, uh, phone number uh, because there was not as much available. Again, Paxlovid, the intent is to reduce the risk of severe disease complications and hospitalization. It does need to be taken typically in the first five days of infection. And that makes it important to determine if you have a COVID-19 infection versus some other bug quite quickly if you're concerned and considering getting a Paxlovid uh, the, the pill. For those who are on the medications listed here, so JAK kinase inhibitors, these are contraindicated medications of Paxlovid. Now that does not mean that if you're on these medications, you cannot take Paxlovid. It means that you stop your JAK kinase inhibitor, which you should do anyways, while you have an active COVID-19 infection. You take the Paxlovid, when that's done, you can resume your JAK kinase inhibitor. But again, if just to be safe, always best to speak about this with your rheumatologist. Because the, of Paxlovid being available and um, how that can impact having COVID-19, getting a PCR test is still potentially worthwhile, particularly for those with rheumatic disease. You can get a prescription from your physician or rheumatologist to allow for this to happen. Rapid tests are good if they're positive results, but a negative result may be a false negative, and that's where the value of PCR testing still may come in handy. There's been a lot of talk about masking as well, and we do want to say that overall masking, uh, there's minimal harm, but keep in mind what a mask is meant to do. Your mask protects you from others. So your mask protects the others around you. It does not do a great job, though, of protecting you from other people who are around you. So if someone else is sick around you, a mask isn't do, going to do a great job unless it's an N95 from protecting you from what they have. So the most effective way of masking is actually if the majority of people, if not everyone, is masking. That being said, I think if everyone does their part here or there, it's, there still can be some value. So if you are sick, COVID or really any other respiratory illness, it would certainly worthwhile wearing a mask to protect others, particularly if you are going out. The best is to stay home and so you're avoiding being in public areas and avoiding sharing whatever infection might be. Um, but wearing a mask at least is one extra step that you can help with others. So our bottom line, COVID is still here. It remains a severe viral illness, can have significant impact on individuals. It's still causing significant hospitalization and the healthcare system is still overburdened as a result. So everything that we can do as individuals, but as a, a society in terms of vaccination, masking, Paxlovid, being smart when we're feeling unwell, can all be really helpful to keep us healthy and safe during these times. We'll continue to update the website and post other videos as new information comes along.